Okay, so I want to give uh, two case studies and uh, I had these uh, in mind for somebody in the class who was interested in, um, in medical imaging and the first study is about functional MRI so functional magnetic resonance imaging abbreviated also as fMRI now what you do in functional MRI is you, you try to find out which part which part of the brain are active or, or related to a particular activity and for example you can do the following you can have as explanatory variables your experimental paradigm so let's say uh, let's say uh, I do not show a picture of your mother-in-law I show a picture of your mother-in-law I do not show a picture of your mother-in-law and I repeat that over time so this is time and uh, these would be zeros or ones let's say and then the other variable would be just all ones so this is what we put in this is what we c can control these are our independent variables this is our design matrix x now on the other hand I have a lot of measurements so uh, for just as many time points of course I have MR images magnetic resonance images and so I have as many rows here in this matrix Y as I have pixels in my MR image and now I want to relate these two by an activation image or something like it so I'm here using uh, my regression coefficients this would be beta transposed so I know that MR images are two-dimensional but I had to vectorize each of these images to fit into a particular column so this column here would be uh, one magnetic resonance image at one time point and how can you hope for fMRI to work uh, well our brain uses oxygen and when you think hard or when you activate a brain region it needs more oxygen and this uh, supply and demand does not work it's not perfectly steered but there is a there is a um, slide lag so when you start working hard with one region of your brain then for a short moment you start to deplete the oxygen content and then your system pumps more blood and more oxygen into that area uh, and once the activation has stopped you start or you still see the surplus for a while before it goes back to normal and uh, for reasons that people still argue about why exactly this is true this makes for intensity differences in the MR image and uh, this is called a bold response blood oxygenation level dependent response which is such a fudge word okay it's something with blood and something with oxygenation but we don't really understand the mechanisms in detail okay um, and then I mentioned that uh, you know the hemodynamic response since we know it what it looks like on average we would put here in our design matrix we would not put the zeros and ones but we would smooth this we would convolve this with the hemodynamic response okay but having said that this is what it is 
So let's say we have uh, a thousand MR images over time and they have many thousand pixels so the dimensions here are not quite uh, to scale. Um, <coughs> we have here my independent, so this is dependent, these are the independent variables. I've here put in my uh, the pattern of my experiment, my experimental paradigm and the constant offset. So can you explain to me what what the columns of beta are then? Or the columns of beta transpose? Please talk to your neighbor. So this would, so beta is what we're trying to estimate and it is the reaction to a certain input uh, in this particular field after reshaping it to become an image again because you see here we have vectorized each image to become a column vector so we can de-vectorize it to turn it into an image again. Uh, in this particular field this would be called a statistical parametric map and you have all seen uh, such maps before you know, these are images like this one here where people say uh, okay if you're shown your mother-in-law then you know these regions here light up real bright and uh, whereas if you see you know a region of somebody you like then you know <laughs> and so on so I'm, I'm making this up yeah but but this is this is the kind of thing that you get out with beta up to some minor you know processing steps that I've not mentioned yet um, so let's look again at the structure of this thing here um, it was a bit bit of a different setting from the regressions that we've discussed before because uh, this here this entire thing this is a collection of independent regressions so what what we had before would be that we were considering a y which has which had just a single a single row uh, so these were the multiple measurements and we would have gotten out two regression coefficients because we only have two measurements we only have these are only two explanatory variables but now we've been stacking many of these observations and hence many of these uh, regression coefficients together to write it in a, in a single matrix form but all of these are independent regressions and now for each of these regressions I I could use the kind of test that we've just seen uh, so this let's say this t-test and ask is this particular uh, f feature uh, is it explaining the observations or not um, and if I obtain as a result of my hypothesis test that yes this feature is important then I would get an entry or an activation here in my statistical parametric map and otherwise I would get a zero now if you do that uh, you can for example find activations like this so if you look closely there is an activation here and there is an activation and there is a feeble activation there um, we're looking at um, the brain of a fish uh, <laughs> a fish that was shown uh, images of uh, humans doing different things and uh, 
interestingly, you know, it was a post-mortem Atlantic settlement. So actually, this fish was dead. <laughs> so it <laughs> it means that if you if you don't do <laughs> And this is what this article is all about. <laughs> if you don't do the processing the way you should, <laughs> then it's a, it's a good article. Huh? If you don't do the processing the way you should, um, then uh, you find that showing a dead fish, uh, pictures of humans, you know, embracing or arguing and so on, will lead to activations in, in those regions. And as the authors discuss, yeah, so either this is... Uh, rather amazing discovery in terms of post-mortem etiological, this is the research of fish, cognition, <laughs> uh, or there's something a bit off with regard to the statistical approach. And uh, well, these people um, did one thing, you know, willingly, they did one thing right and the other thing wrong. Um, the thing they did right is that they used this t-test in each of these uh, pixels. So, uh, if they had shown just the coefficient estimates everywhere, then you would have seen you know, non-zero values everywhere. However, you see they report t-values, so they, they do report only the significant uh, entries. Now, how can we have significant entries in a dead fish? So statistically, uh, you know, please explain to me what, what has happened. Remembering that we have, you know, let's say we have 10,000 pixels, that's a conservative estimate, measured over time. So we have uh, 10,000 time series. Yeah? Exactly, exactly. So we have 10,000 time series. We correlate each of these 10,000 time series with our experimental design pattern, and we accidentally find some of them to correlate highly. Uh, so the authors here did an additional thing. They used this cluster limitation. So they did not report individual significant pixels, but only clusters of, in this case, at least three significant pixels. Um, now, why do they do it? Um, they do it to, <laughs> uh, it's a slap in the face of, you know, many people working in fMRI because um, most, so the, the software packages, they have the option to do this right. And the experts in the field, they also know how to do it right. But unfortunately, the other people are also publishing papers. And, <laughs> and then in this paper here, they have some statistics. So they, they went through all the papers in a given journal and we're looking at uh, out of these, out of all of these papers, how many did the statistical analysis right? And then they found some horrendous number of, you know, 50% or so uh, that did that used the kind of statistical processing that also gave these interesting results. Okay, um, so you need to correct for this uh, multiple testing problem. So the thing that you described um, that uh, we if we perform very many tests, then just by chance, it is very likely that some of them are going to lead to rejection of the null hypothesis. Um, this is also known as the multiple testing problem. And uh, this can be addressed in two ways. On the one hand, you can try and control the family-wise error rate in which you uh, try to limit the probability or in which you look at the probability that any false positive detection So the probability of any false positive detection should be less than or equal uh, to some value. Or you could look at the false discovery rate where you say that 
um, the probability that a detection that you did find is false positive is less than some value and this false well the family wise error rate is going to be very conservative so it means that if you use this then oftentimes you're not going to find any significant entries at all false discovery rate seems to be a better compromise between ignoring the multiple testing problem and being extremely strict about it yeah so false discovery rate or fdr um, i'm not going to discuss it in more detail now i just want you to remember this so um, i want to put an alarm in your head whenever you perform tens or hundreds thousands of regression independent regressions on some data then you should remember that there is something that there may be a problem and uh, you should uh, well, you know, just remember these words or remember that you wrote them and then you can look up the literature and, and see how to address this. Um, just as a comment, if you could go back to the slide, um, the way there are different ways of addressing this. One way that people use in this particular field is that they smooth over these coefficients and then look for uh, in, this smooth, in these smoothed images for excursions and the size of these excursions above uh, a certain level. Okay, so that's case study one. And it's time for a break. <laughs>